Hello guys, and thank you for tuning into something I've never really tried or considered trying on my channel before. But in the days following the burning of Teldrassil, there are still many discussions, debates, and beautiful memes circulating our wonderful community. The War of Thorns is clearly a series of events that will be discussed and debated for a long time to come, but what if things went a little bit differently? Now, there are many variables to consider, but the one that stands out to me the most is, what if Saurfang had stopped Sylvanas from burning down Teldrassil? Now, I know Nixium and Crucial and I'm sure many others have done lore hypotheticals before, but I figured I'd try my hand at it. Now, please don't think for a second that I think that my what-if scenarios are a better story. Sometimes it's just fun to think what if, you know? Now, there are many ways that Saurfan could have theoretically stopped these events from transpiring, and there's a few that I almost went with in place of this one, but my ideal vision that I settled on goes as follows. Make haste. The war chief awaits. Sarafang shouted as he and the players scoured the nearby woods. Upon eventually finding Sylvanas and Malfurion, Sarafang would hesitate, then stop completely in his tracks. The player is then given an option to speak with Sarafang, and the dialogue would go something like, Sylvanas seeks to engage the Arc Druid. I plan to give her what she wants. As Sylvanas is brought low, she looks past Malfurion, a single word escaping her lips as she is brought to her knees by the might of the Arc Druid. Sarafang. Malfurion would then turn, regarding the High Overlord, who remained silent and motionless, his expression intense. Upon realizing that Saurfang wasn't about to do anything, he returned his attention to the kneeling Sylvanas, snared in roots, futilely attempting to reach for her bow. You have brought much suffering to my people and our lands, Banshee Queen. While some among your horde have traces of honor, it is clear you have none to speak of. Saurfang thinks to himself, Her horde. Malfurion's palms grow bright with astral power. You will desecrate our lands no further. You will. An arrow came from his left at blinding speed, piercing his ribcage and no doubt his lung. Malfurion took a sharp breath, faltered and collapsed, his palms dimming. The roots ensnaring Sylvanas began to weaken and they shortly fell away. Blight collar, Saurfang rumbled. You strike without honor. Don't gloat your time lost formalities to me, high overlord. Sometimes a dishonorable blow is a necessary one. Oftentimes, in fact. Saurfang grumbled as Nathanos rushed to assist his queen, who was on her feet before he even reached her. Sylvanas met Saurfang's eyes intensely, and he returned in kind. You would do well not to forget your duties, Saurfang. Consider this your only warning. Now take his head. Have a moment to ponder your vainglorious ideas of honor, then be done with it. Their eyes remained locked for but another moment, which seemed like an eternity. Sylvanas, full of anger, strode off with Nathanos at her heels, a more pressing matter clearly at hand. Saurfang remained where he had been standing, conflicting emotions flowing through him, loyalty to his war chief, duty to the Horde, the value of his morals, and those of the Horde that he knew. His thoughts were cut short, however, when the distressed voice of Tyrande Whisperwind called out to her beloved. Malfurion attempted to cry out, but instead let out a horrible wheeze. The Banshee Queen, he managed raggedly, those being the last words he attempted. Upon seeing the arrow protruding from Malfurion, Tyrande knocked an arrow of her own and faced Saurfang. Who remain unmoved. It does not seem you are the one who struck him. Yet here you stand, orc. Why do you not kill him when he lies helpless before you? Saurfang's expression gave slightly. He was struck without honor, he said almost ashamedly. I do not deserve to end him. This entire war is without honor, Tyrande outraged. How dare you spill so much innocent blood? Saurfang straightened. We spill blood so that the Horde will endure, he said aloud. But this is seeming less like the Horde I remember. He thought to himself. As per the quest chain, Saurfang then informed Tyrande that Teldrassil would fall regardless of her actions and asked that she retreat with Malfurion. Sparing Saurfang's life for sparing Malfurion's, Tyrande used the hearthstone given to her by Anduin to escape Stormwind, where she would tend to Malfurion's wounds. After having a moment to reflect on what had just transpired, Saurfang hefted his axe and slowly made his way to Sylvanas. Nathanos regarded him coldly as he approached, Sylvanas not even turning to face him initially. What is our next move, War Chief? Sarfang asked with palpable bitterness. So, you've remembered where your loyalties lie? Sylvanas returned sarcastically. My loyalty, Sarfang emphasized, is to the Horde. Sylvanas turned over her shoulder, not even looking at Sarfang directly, and smirked. <laughs> Secure the beach. Prepare to invade the tree. Why? came a breaking voice. Only innocence remain in the tree. Sylvanas approached the figure of Dalar and Summermoon. They faced one another, and to the surprise of both men present, the Banshee Queen leaned in, almost an intimate gesture, and began to speak gently in the dying Night Elf's ear. Mathanos and Saurfang couldn't much make out what was being said. The two remained where they stood, regarding each other coldly. The tension between the two was strong. 
But Thanos committed unconditionally to his dark lady, and Saurfang to the Horde. Saurfang allowed himself to fall into thoughts about Sylvanas and her time in the mantle of Warchief. What could Vol'jin have seen amongst all the notable members of the Horde to make Sylvanas the Warchief? She who would carry out many acts, some questionable, some downright atrocious in the name of the Horde. Did he value his oath to the Warchief? Of course he did, without a shadow of a doubt. But where would he draw the line between loyalty and honor? When would he have to choose? Would he choose to step away with those who would follow him as Vol'jin did when Garrosh took the mantle? Would he remain at the Warchief's side regardless of what they do and die for it as Nazgrim had? Saurfang is old. He has seen a great deal, fought countless battles, lost more than most could comprehend. He was tired of having to bear so many burdens, make so many impossible decisions, but he would bear it all until his dying breath if he must, for the good of the Horde. Saurfang was still deep in thought when the words came. Burn it. Saurfang jumped back into reality, but Thanos even lifted his head in surprise. When neither of them moved, the words came again, this time much more harsh. Burn it! Burn it? Saurfang thought to himself. What could she possibly- The massive tree looming behind Sylvanas provided an obvious, wordless answer. What? Saurfang couldn't believe it. The tree? Sylvanas narrowed her eyes coldly. Through gritted teeth, she simply replied. I said, burn it! Her gaze locked with Saurfang's once again, only his eyes were not filled with burning intensity, but pure horror and disgust. There are innocents. Children, even, he began, but Sylvanas was not wasting any time. Bethanos, she yelled. Her champion stiffened briefly, but began to fumble his way towards the nearby siege weapons. As this was a siege, the nearby troops were prepared and quickly loaded the catapults with a volatile ammunition that was useless until set alight. It was then that Athanos lit a torch from the flames of a destroyed Night Elf Ballista and ran to light the volatile substance. As he did, he felt a strong hand come across his chest, barring his way. Wordless, Saurfang's expression has said it all. The Dark Lady commands it, Athanos shouted. But as he attempted to shove Saurfang away and make another move for the catapults, the iron grip of the High Overlord locked onto Athanos' arm with such force that he dropped his torch and pulled him back with even greater force that Athanos lost his footing on the sand. He rose quickly, eagerly branching his weapons. You defy the will of the Dark Lady? Of the War Chief? Sylvanas' eyes widened in shock as Saurfang glanced in her direction, not completely taking his eyes off Nathanos. I will not allow more innocent blood to shed at the hands of the Horde. If you wish me to stand aside, you will have to kill me. While this seemed like an appealing idea to Nathanos, he wasn't too eager to charge the legendary Saurfang. A moment of silence passed before he spoke again. Well, what will it be, War Chief? Sylvanas studied him for a moment, eyes cold and narrow. She would not be defied by her own soldiers, but she would not see the loss of an incredibly valuable asset. Not just yet, anyway. Saurfang will be useful to Sylvanas for the time. Another moment passed, and Saurfang lifted his axe, keeping his eyes fixed on the Thanos. Give me your answer, war chief. When it seemed like all hell was about to break loose, her voice rang out. Stand down, the both of you. The two men looked at her. My queen, he directly undermines your- Stand down, Nathanos. Her champion put down his weapons, and Saurfang lowered his axe. Sylvanas strode towards Saurfang, a cool but cocky smirk on her face. She stopped a mere pace in front of him. Meeting his eyes, she offered him her parting words. Have your precious honor today, Saurfang, for it is clearly all you have left. As she turned to leave him, where exactly did it get your son again? She mocked as she strode away. She gave Nathanos orders to organize the Horde forces and prepare to launch an assault on the tree. Lowering his eyes, Saurfang only hoped that Tyrande had spread word to her champions to evacuate Teldrassil. Regardless of that, however, he had a duty to fulfill. He kept the honor of the Horde intact today, but tomorrow he would march on the tree and face his adversaries with honor, not watch from a distance, as they all burned to ash. Alright, so that was sort of my first uh, attempt at a what-if sort of scenario. Um, just let me know if you enjoyed that. Uh, it was kind of weird, it was kind of tricky, because there's already an established story with, you know, good writers, and I am no writer by any means, but if you want me to do more of these, then hey, maybe I'll do more of these, but if you thought it was really stupid and never do it again, then let me know that as well. Uh, I will obviously take all criticism into consideration, and I hope you weren't actually watching this video expecting too much to look at. This is definitely meant to be more of a listening type of video, just to kind of listen and think about some things. But yeah, with all that said, uh, don't know what my next video will be. Don't know what it will be about, but uh, until you see me again, live well, my friends.